conducted open meetings. This is Christina Matthews, co-chair of the Needham Human Rights Committee. Permit, permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. State, state your name, please, and then um, you can say here or present. Cynthia Ganung. Uh, here. Jennifer Howard Schroeder. Here. Jared Pizzuto. Here. Marlene Schultz. Here. Bud Schramm. Bud Schramm here. Ashok Mehta. He's muted. He's muted. Unmute. You're unmuted, Ashcott. Can you hear me now? Yes. Ashok is here. Great. Julie Venables. Julie? Here. Amelia Klein? Here. Carrie Hurwich? Carrie Hurwich here. And Christina Matthews, um, uh, I'm here. Uh, let's see, and, and, and with staff who are present, we have uh, Daphne Collins? Here. And Clay Hutchinson? Here, and I will be stepping out momentarily to leave you with Daphne. Okay, thank you. Thank you both for helping us get this set up. Um, so good afternoon. This open meeting of the Needham Human Rights Committee is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings, and as such, the Governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will will not feature public comment, or actually will it, Daphne, because you were saying that you might be able to, to provide um, comments that the public has. Daphne? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so will the, will the meeting feature public comment or not? Pardon me? Will, will this meeting feature public comment or not? It has the ability to have a uh, public comment if there are somebody who raises their hand. Okay, so then this meeting will feature public comment. For this meeting, the uh, Needham Human Rights Committee is convening by Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other People may be able to see you and, the, and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Okay, meeting you also, I yes. just want to let you know, uh, Christina, you do have one attendee and her name is Sophia. Okay. Yes, we know her. Great. Um, so meeting business ground rules, we're now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait um, until the floor is yielded to you and state your name before speaking. I think that's the most important piece. If you can state your name before you, um, before you speak or comment. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. Great, thank you all so much. Um, so, uh, Sophia, welcome, welcome to the meeting. We're glad you're here um, for our first, um, Piece of the agenda is approval of our minutes from February 27, 2020. Hopefully everyone had a chance to look at them. If you have any feedback to offer. 
I move that we accept the minutes as written. Bud Schramm. Cynthia Ganong, I second that we uh, approve, accept the minutes as written. Circulated. Thank you. We will approve the minutes. And um, we've also we've already been through the public participation. We know that Sophia Dedek, who is a um, Needham High School student, uh, who has begun the process of um, applying to the committee, is on this call. So we're happy to have her. Christine, Christine, you'll now have to go through a roll call vote for the acceptance of minutes. Oh, that's right. I know. Okay. okay. Um, so, Jen Howard Schroeder. This is Jennifer. I vote to accept the minutes. Thank you. Marlene? Uh, Marlene Schultz, I abstain. And Ashok? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. I abstain. I wasn't there for the meeting. Okay. Julie? We're uh, voting to accept the minutes. Julie Van Ols, I vote to accept the minutes. Carrie? Carrie Hurwich, I vote to accept the minutes. Thank you. And uh, Christina Matthews, I also vote to accept the minutes. Thank you. Can you feel great? No, there's more people. Oh, Cynthia? <laughs> Cynthia Ganong, I vote to accept the minutes. And Bud. I accept too. Thank you. And Jared. And Amelia. <laughs> oh, sorry, you're not showing up, there you are. Amelia? I accept. Thank you. And Jared, did I already call your name? No. Okay. Uh, yeah. I didn't quite get that. Did anyone else hear what he said? Uh, he both sticks. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you all for that. So we will we will um, approve those minutes. And the um, first order of business under old business is our diversity and discussion book group. Um, we are sl slated to host the next um, diversity discussion book group uh, uh, that's, that is supposed to be on June 10th. Um, I'd like to begin by just giving Cynthia a quick chance to report on last month's book, book, uh, book group discussion so we can kind of hear how that went as we consider whether we should uh, move forward with the next one. Cynthia Ganung. Thank you, Cynthia Ganung. Uh, here's a report on May 16th at 7 p.m. The Diversity and Discussion Book Club met by Zoom with Grace Toulousen, author of The Body Papers. This was sponsored by the Needham Human Rights Committee, the Needham Diversity Initiative, and the Needham Free Public Library. It was rescheduled from the in-person meeting of March 12th. There were 45 participants. It was facilitated by Needham Diversity Initiative members, Jen Shek Khan and library trustee, Anna Geraldo Kerr. Grace Toulousen gave a powerful account of her life experiences. Many participants responded to questions related to the book and shared about their own experiences as immigrants and people of color. Thank you. Um, and so we had had a bit of an exchange, Jen um, and I with, with Anna about whether this was feasible to um, host a, you know, a, a, the next book club and uh, Carrie uh, volunteered to host the next one. And Anna thought that it might be a little bit too soon um, to consider June 10th as the date she felt that we needed to give people at least three or four weeks um, notice, especially with everything going on in case people wanted to participate, wanted to read the book before participating. Um, and so I think, um, yeah, so I think that's where we were at with this. We had made, made a final decision and we're waiting to hear from the group about um, how everyone felt about that. Christina, uh, I'm assuming that we're going to reach out to those that were participating in the last group, that that would be the key group that we'd be reaching out to. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we typically advertise through the, I guess, through all our, our usual channels, the library, NDI, and us, and um, perhaps we could do some targeted outreach to those that participated. 
Marlene, were you about to say something? Yeah, I raised my hand. Can you see that I raised my hand? I did. Okay. Um, yes, it's Marlene Schultz speaking. I was um, also at the book group and uh, what this Zoom call doesn't have, that that one did, that was, um, this is the first time I've been on one that doesn't have it. It has a chat. So that all of the questions um, that uh, there was a moderator looking at the questions and then feeding them to the author. Uh, That's because and, this is a webinar. It's not a Zoom meeting. That's oh, the difference. Okay. Thanks, Karen. You can, you but, can but, enable but, it, but go ahead. So, so the, the point is, um, I thought that was very effective. So because people ended up, you know, they're like categories of questions. Um, and so maybe not everybody got their exact question, but they had it sort of generalized um, in the questions. And, and then they ask the question of the author. Of course, that's different because we won't have an author, but um, I thought that was very effective. There was no talking over. Um, and I think that it's, it is a good way to do, a, I do my own personal book group <laughs> over Zoom also. Um, so I'm, I think it's a good way to do it. And we did have a huge turnout. And I think part of it is that we're all finding Zoom meetings are very well attended because no matter sort of where you are, you can do it. If you got kids at home or you're cooking dinner, you can still maybe get on a Zoom call. Um, so that's, that's like what I'm saying. I'd like to um, mention that as a policy, the town does not have um, chatting involved in the meetings. And that has a lot to do with just in the standard, you know, at a standard meeting, if you had a meeting, uh, the public sits and then it's open to public comment. And so also there is no ability to cap, everything is captured. So even if two people are talking or met multiple people, so the town as a policy does not allow uh, chatting in webinars or public uh, at public hearings. Daphne, would that be the case if it was the library book group though? Or would that no, be the I same as know, this? I don't know okay. in terms of, um, but in terms of public uh, public meetings, um, that feature is not just because it's not the standard in a fiscal sure. meeting. Yeah, this was not a this was a a book group from the diversity initiative, the human rights committee. And um, there was no voting or, you know, it wasn't that kind of a, I yeah. mean, that's why they were able to have it. And also, also, also that being said is if there's a facilitator that's getting the questions and putting all the questions together and asking uh, them to the group, uh, you're not even going to know who's asking the question. Well, that's actually not true. It shows in the chat who asked the question. It actually depends on how okay. you set it. Okay. You, can, you yeah. can have it so that people can only chat with the host, or yeah. you can have them so that they can chat with all the participants. I host a million Zoom meetings a week. You can totally set it up that way. Yeah. Yeah. We found that having uh, kind of like two facilitators, the person like Jen Shek Khan in this case was, was ask, asking the questions. And then I think it was Anna was helping to feel the responses that came through the, through the chat. So I think they, the, um, they've had enough experience with doing that through the library um, and NDI and NHRC that we can get help uh, from, from Anna and others about how to do that part. And then if we come up with two people to share the facilitation, that would meet the, um, meet the criteria of what they found has worked well. Yeah, I know how to do that. That's, that's not a problem at all. Um, I was one of the people who was willing to host it. Um, I just, I get concerned with if we get too late into June and into mm -hmm. the, as things are opening up and people are starting to go to their summer homes and that kind of thing, I think we might lose an audience if we wait too long. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else feel that way? Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. So let's look, let's look at, um, I mean, we can at least look quickly at kind of dates um, sure. and maybe propose something to Anna. Jen, did you have any thoughts on any of this you wanted to offer? Uh, no, I, I agree with Carrie. I think if we get too late, we're going to lose people. Um, although there's not a lot of people going too many places, I think it's just harder to keep people's attention on things. Mm -hmm. As we start, mm -hmm. the um, I wonder if we should do the very the next June seventeenth. Well, the other is has this been publicized at all? Not in it. Not as a virtual um, book club. But people knew that this was. I mean, I knew the 
did I just know through our meetings? I mean, I knew that we were doing educated and um, a lot of people have read the book, so it may not be so bad to do it on June 10th. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Does, um, does Amelia know that she's still not, her video's not on? No, what do I do? Start yeah. video? Yeah. Amelia, what device are, oh, there you are. You're on. <laughs> You're on. Obviously, I am not a uh, Zoom user. <laughs> it's my third Zoom conference. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm getting better, though. <laughs> There's improvement. <laughs> What do you, what, what, how do people folks feel about um, June 10th versus June 17th? I mean, the last day of school, I guess, is June 18th um, school. I mean, I think the extra week would not hurt so that we could get some time to get, um, we put something together to advertise it and then get it out to people. You know, what's already, what is that give us? That's our scheduled meeting. That's three weeks, yeah. That's our, that's our scheduled meeting, which we probably won't be having, right? Because we'd have to go do this, we have to do it during yeah. the day. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering how people are getting a copy of the book. Um, the libraries are closed. They would have to order it on Amazon. They don't or, have it. Or download it from a library to a Kindle or a device. Uh -huh. Okay. The library did say they are opening up for kind of um, drive-by drive pickups June 1st. Oh, they are. Oh, wow. That's new. Yeah. And Barnes and Noble has had a lot of books in stock, actually, as opposed to Amazon, just as an FYI. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's another reason to potentially have it on the 17th to give people the time to read it and uh, also to send an email out to those that attended the last book club. I wanted to respond what, to Marlene asking if there'd been any publicity. All of the uh, of the dates and the books were originally public, published and then they were canceled when things were closed. Okay. So, so people have had, who've seen the list would have known that. It hasn't been a recent thing though. So, and mm -hmm. I think uh, Anna did a very good job with uh, publicizing the last event and it did have a specialized group including somebody from the Philippines and all the people who know the woman who's the author. So I think it would be this may be moving on to the next thing. Important to find out which parts of the book you want to highlight in terms of issues that would capture people's uh, attention before they get into reading it. Mm -hmm. You mean to send out some sort of pre preliminary questions or something like that? When the public, when the uh, publication, when the publicity goes out. Okay. Maybe Anna has something in mind, but for the okay. people like Carrie and all who are going to be facilitating, like it was uh, with um, the body papers, they focused a lot on the fact that she has was from an immigrant background, and then mm -hmm. there were the personal experiences she had, but that was a really large focus of it, which I think um, encouraged a lot of people to um, want to participate. Okay. All right. Thank you. So I think it's, it sounds like uh, people feel comfortable with pushing this out one week to June 17th. So we can, we can get back to Anna and um, see if that date it works for her. Okay, and in terms of new business, um, the first piece to discuss is the community resilience building one day training that we've had to push off. Um, on, on May 4th, we got an email from Nicole um, from Over Zero, who, and she had outlined a plan for remote workshop design for the training. And we had brought that to Kate's attention and she said, you know, at this point the town could not support that, uh, but that perhaps in the fall um, that they might, you know, be able to talk more about this. So we just kind of you know, tabled that for the time being. Um, Jen, do you have anything you'd like to say about that? I think the only thing, um, this is Jen Howard, uh, that I wanted to ask was if, um, if we wanna identify anybody or if there's anybody on the committee that wants to, I don't know, kind of be monitoring um, the progress over the next few months to just in case there's an opportunity to start planning again, not that it would happen during the summer, but that um, if any more planning happens, 
um, throughout the next several months before the fall. Um, I mean, I, I, you mean to kind of push this forward? Right, and just to kind of, um, I don't know, keep, keep it on Kate's radar mm -hmm. and, um, you know, which I recognize is really hard right now because I know she has so many, so many balls in the air, but um, I guess, you know, like over the last, <laughs> I think last couple of years, we've had a, a smaller committee working out through the summer, trying to get this moving. And if we wanted to just identify two or three people from the committee that are interested in, in continuing kind of being that home base for this particular project um, in case things start to move again. Okay, Cynthia? Uh, and Amelia, this is to bring you up to date on uh, the, Needham Diver the Needham Diversity Initiative, who is one of our partners in this project that Amelia and I were both at their meeting last week. And Nicole uh, was there and had sent out to everybody on the NDI, I haven't read the whole thing, a, a remarkable document about counteracting dangerous narratives in the time of COVID-19. And I think that we talked about how that was a really important approach, which is a little different, obviously, than what we were thinking about before, as a way of uh, broadening the involvement of the select board and potentially town groups. And they were thinking in terms of maybe having her do some presenting either as part of the diversity summit in fall or other times. So I'm not sure whether, I think we need to touch bases with the, some people from the NDI group and Nicole to see whether there's any different openings right now. Um, and I would ask um, Amelia was there too, whether, whether she had some, perceptions that would um, point us in whether there's a new direction we can go. You know, I, I, I think the committee uh, was very eager to uh, learn more about the report and the, the, um, the efforts made by um, uh, I think at this point um, we need to get more information and decide how we are all connecting the Human Rights Committee and, and Needham Diversity Committee. Are, are we going to work together? Um, what might the next steps be uh, during the course of the summer uh, when I, I think we can have a lot of discussions. Maybe that's all we can do right now. But I don't know how we could mm -hmm. move further. I, I mean, I think at, at some point, I mean, I know that NDI has continued to, to be able to, you know, move a lot faster um, on things. And I don't want to, um, I, I don't want to be a damper on what they're able to accomplish and get moving with. I think that, that um, Nicole's report is probably something that the community would really like to hear about. Mm -hmm. And so maybe at some level we need to decide is this, the, is this the right time for this particular project to be tied to the town committee where we know the town is, is pretty um, mm -hmm. occupied with a lot of other urgent things right now? Hmm. Okay. Marlene? Is the diversity initiative planning to have a summit, like an online summit in the fall? Okay, you had a meeting. I thought maybe you guys had discussed it. We are still discussing it. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Um, I think people want to wait and see. Um, most likely would be uh, not a in-person event. Right. And, it's, it, and that would be very, very complicated for a diversity summit. If you mm -hmm. think about the model that we have. Uh, the importance, uh, there has been some discussion, but I think that will probably um, be, it'll be a focus of our next few meetings. Well, it's a, that is a different model, but I actually was in a very large meeting with several hundred people and they put us into small um, discussion groups, mm -hmm. which you can do easily. Mm -hmm. I was in a discussion group with five people. Um, 
and then they brought us back. I mean, I don't know how to do that. Carrie probably does. But, <laughs> um, so, I mean, I was just thinking if they're planning to do it, maybe that's, and, and they're thinking about having Nicole come, that might be the, the better forum since um, it sounds like, you know, if we want the town's involvement, it sounds like this is not the time for us to do this with the town. Mm -hmm. yeah. David Summergrad uh, has a lot of experience and I think um, he is, is going to lead us uh, into that direction of how we could do it as a, a Zoom conference. Mm -hmm. They were also talking about, this is Cynthia, I forgot to say name, uh, about other models like maybe having a a series of two hour seminars or various ways. It sounds like uh, I'm aware of the time here too, that we probably can't figure this all out right now, that maybe we need some way of uh, having an official kind of connection with NDI as as things are emerging. And I don't know whether we'll know in the summer or whether we'll know in September or whether we'll know next spring. We just really are, it's, I think we're considering different alternatives. Yeah, I think that it would be a challenge to try to, um, I think change the way, because this was going to be kind of led by the town, right? Right. Um, and so, yeah, I think that discussion would need to be had, you know, do, mm -hmm. does the town still want to take the lead on this or um, should this be a kind of community driven initiative that the NDI could, could um, host? So maybe, maybe next month, um, that's something, you know, uh, yeah, that's something that we could discuss with them. It, feel, it feels tough to have, you know, to kind of push these types of things right now as, as they've got so many, um, yeah, they've got so many things just in terms of town governance even coming up in the next next couple of weeks as town meeting is, is June 8th. Um, I don't think we were saying at the NDI meeting, let's do this with the town. It was just like, this may be part of the process of getting, getting some of the ideas out there from over zero, not that this was the training and not that there wouldn't be the training, at least mm -hmm. that was my understanding that right now in this pandemic that we're in, that that's an opening to understanding the whole process of how you uh, create an inclusive community and deal with the kinds of prejudice that come up and that I don't know how that would relate to the training, but it just seemed like an important thing to share with the community and for these, for this group and the other group. Mm -hmm. Have you shared it with the group, the um, the link to the to uh, her report? Are you, are you asking? That uh, might be something maybe the committee want, would want to look at. Uh, is it, uh, Amelia, to which group? Uh, Jen sent it to us. Oh, to our group here. Yeah, yeah to uh, the the human rights, everyone on the committee, or just a few of us. I don't I'm quite sure if we all received that. I think there are two different things. There was one um, that was a, an email from Nicole with a possible plan going forward. Yeah, that's... and I think that there's separately that there's this report that Cynthia is referring to that is oh, um, a publication. Yeah, I'm, th I'm talking about the uh, what Cynthia mentioned. Yeah. This latest report. Which, which actually was presented to us at the end of the meeting, so we never uh, Needham diversity meeting, so we never really discussed it in depth. Mm -hmm. It's so maybe what we're saying. I mean, I agree with Amelia that to send that out to the human rights committee members, so that um, okay, and we could follow up with that at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. It makes me wonder uh, a broader conversation that maybe we need to have with Kate Fitzpatrick um, and the select board is what what these um, requirements around remote um, meetings related to the town, what impact that has on uh, events that NHRC is considering it being like an official co-sponsor to like if, if that, I don't know, if that changes the, um, mm. 
the requirements of what mm -hmm. needs to happen, of just mm -hmm. thinking about what, what steps needed to happen for just this meeting to take place. I don't know. It may be that it's, it doesn't impact it at all, but I think that's something that, that we should confirm with Good point. Kate. Okay. So with regards to this topic, I think um, with the one day training, I think we're kind of in, still in a holding pattern. Mm -hmm. And Jen was asking if there's anybody else that, you know, who in the, in the summer would like to maybe help move this forward, um, you know, and, and uh, yeah, see what might happen this fall with it. Does anyone in the group have any interest in taking that on? Well, I had expressed some interest in Marlene and Cynthia and I worked on it last year, but uh, I'm not really sure um, what I could do other than uh, gather information. It's unclear to me what I could do as a member of the committee uh, during the next few months. I think just to, to, to clarify, I don't think that there really is anything that we can do. Um, I think that what Kate Fitzpatrick has said basically is that um, she said towards the end of June that she, that she might have some time and space to kind of think about what um, what NHRC can be doing in the coming months. And so really, I think of just if, you know, if it's um, me and Marlene and Cynthia again, if, if I get some information or if any of us get some information that tells, tells us that this is going to move forward or what might happen next, that there are people we can reach out to to say, "Hey, let's let's get back together and talk about what's happening." I don't think I don't think there's anything really to do right now other than sit and wait. Mm -hmm. Well, I would be willing to participate. I, so would I in, at that at that level. Okay. I mean, you guys have had all the conversations though with Kate, so that's why you know you know where she is on this, and I I don't. I've had no conversations with her. Yeah. So you can let us know if you sense that it's possible to, that it would make, be uh, reasonable to meet. We definitely will. And, and we don't know anything that you don't know <laughs> right now. So just, just to make sure you understand that. We don't, there's nothing secret that we know. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Cynthia, were you saying that you wanted to be part of that group or was it just Amelia and Marlene? Yes, if it looks like there's a reason for us to move forward. Okay, thank we'll you. Trust, we'll trust you and Jen to let us know. Thank you. Now the next item on the agenda is the event um, uh, Dispelling Myths of Colorblindness that uh, partnering with the Real Coalition. Jen, do you want to give any sort of update on that? The only update that I can really give um, is that when the Real Coalition met back in March before everything started shutting down, um, Diane Simmons, I think might be her last name, mm -hmm. from the schools was telling the Real, Real Coalition that she was partnering with the NHRC to work on this event, um, talking about the myths of colorblindness. So unfortunately, <laughs> then everything shut down. So nothing obviously has happened with it in terms of training or planning. Um, so hopefully, uh, as we start to get more clarity about how things are, are going to be moving forward, um, we can step back into that. But I just wanted to report back out that we were on the radar of the Rail Coalition to do something um, related to that based on one of our discussions from past meetings. OK. Thank you. And I think Ashok had to leave. Um, the next item was his, uh, he was going to report on work with Tom Denton. Um, oh, I, think he, I think he's, he's gone. I should have moved that up. Okay. Uh, but I don't, I, I, I would be surprised if there was any, too much progress or any change there. <laughs> I think the schools are just trying to figure out the day to day right now. Um, and now a review of Needham housing authority report for issues related to human rights. Amelia, do you want to, lead that discussion? Yes, uh, I was asked to participate in a, a meeting. Um, Dan Matthews uh, recommended that someone from the Human Rights Committee attend a meeting of a consortium of communities um, who receive a federal block grant, and Needham is one of them, and this consortium is called West Metro Home Consortium. 
The meeting was held to assess fair housing practice in Needham on April 7th, and it was a Zoom uh, call. Uh, and Dan was part of that conversation. I, representing the Human Rights Committee, Jen asked if I would do take that role. And there was someone from the school committee and a couple of other people who, who I didn't know, but they were affiliated with uh, Needham Housing Authority. And the focus of that meeting was to learn more about impediments and barriers to federal housing in Needham. Um, each community uh, develops a plan which identifies uh, federal housing issues, and that's what the meeting was about. I agreed to be part of this meeting to determine how the Human Rights Committee could connect to some of the issues and what would be of relevance to our, our committee and the work of our committee. And there were 12 questions, and I, only three of the questions that were discussed, I felt were relevant to us. One of the questions, on, and this was facilitated by um, a private group uh, counseling, um, and, and I forgot their name, but they facilitated the meeting and developed the questions. And they were going to write the report. Uh, and the, the, one of the questions was, to what extent do you feel like residents in your community are educated about their rights regarding fair housing? I think uh, this is an area that the Human Rights Committee can explore together with the Needham Housing Authority staff. Uh, what do residents say? I, I think that's important. And there was a report, or I think I would prefer to call it a survey, that was done by the Needham Housing Authority several months ago. Uh, we looked at that report as a committee, but uh, uh, received it as a link, but it was described in the Needham Times. And there, there were some pretty negative things that, that were um, shared in that report on, on the basis of questions asked to residents. Um, so we have some idea of what, what residents think about some of the issues. Uh, I also think it is critical, and we, we have been saying this, we know this, it is critical that a resident be represented on the Human Rights Committee. We still don't have anyone. It's been several years. Um, and I think that's something we need to pursue. Another question is, to what extent do residents of your community have equitable access to public transportation? Are there certain populations that are particularly affected by limited lack of access to public transportation? Well, if you look at some of the communities, the Needham Housing Authority communities, there is limited public transportation, the MBTA bus route, commuter rail, there's no inner city town service transportation, you need a car to get to access to services, food markets, stores in town center, post offices, medical facilities, special events, meetings. This limits community life and interaction for people in the Needham Housing Authority. So this is the, another way I think that we can connect, uh, or we might think about connecting uh, to the Medium Housing Authority staff and residents. And another question was, to what extent do residents in your community understand housing as a civil rights issue? I think this is an area that we need to review in collaboration with the Medium Housing Authority director. So that, that's basically um, what I would like to share uh, from the, the meeting. Uh, and I think um, this is something that, that uh, we should pursue in the near future. Okay. Thank you for that, Amelia. Um, I really appreciate that you took that much time with it. Um, and identified the good the questions for us. I don't have a good plan for our next step right now. Um, I think I would suggest 
meeting with uh, the staff, with officials at the Needham Housing Authority, uh, and I'm not sure uh, if that is in place yet. Uh, I know there were some changes um, and there were some serious issues that the Needham Housing Authority was dealing with. So we may have to first find out um, what has taken place in terms of people uh, taking positions, official positions. Marlene? Getting there. Yeah, that's Marlene Schultz speaking. Well, in addition to talking to their paid staff, there is um, a residence council. And um, I think you get different answers from paid staff than you get from people who are actually living there <laughs> and experiencing it. So I would wanna make sure that whatever we did, we heard from those people as well. Um, you remember the one last woman who was on the Human Rights Committee left because she became the chair of the, I don't know, the residence council. I'm not sure that I'm using the right name, but um, that's just something that I was thinking that would be um, important to make sure that it, if we're moving forward with this, that we do that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I, Cynthia? Um, I recall that Tim uh, McDonald has some role with uh, moving forward with the results of the survey. And it's kind of hazy in my mind, but uh, in March, right before uh, things shut down, he was scheduled to come to the Needham Clergy Association to share the results of the survey and get f feedback and input from all uh, the different houses of worship about how could help uh, respond to some of the concerns that had come up. So I don't know if he has a role with this. I'm looking at Christina thinking maybe she I know. know. I mean, and I'm, I'm thinking of all that, um, you know, he's leading right now with a little help response. No. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I do think it's going to be a tough time for us to begin any new initiatives, honestly. Um, and I don't know what, you know, the coming months will hold. Uh, no one does. But um, I know this is something that at least in the few years I've been on here that you that I've heard several times and I've never fully understood what what our relationship to the Housing Authority um, was I know you all had mentioned that in the past that the this committee had helped to advocate for residents and other issues there, um, but yeah, I think our role in in the town as advisory to the select board, uh, it, all of it is a little bit murky for me in terms of understanding how, what function we could serve in with mm -hmm. the housing authority. Um, I do think that what the third question that Amelia um, raised about to what extent does like the Needham community understand uh, housing as a, um, a human rights issue would be fair game and would not necessarily uh, force any complicated um, negotiating for, for advocacy space. Um, I think that us thinking about doing some kind of educational program about housing as a human right in general might be a way for us at some point to get some discussion going in town and maybe um, start making some connections there to figure out what the right, what the right area um, or what, what the right opportunities might be for us to have any kind of um, impact or, or influence mm -hmm. in that space. Because um, I, I do, I get the sense that um, nobody would be thinking that it's the NHRC role to go in there and tell the new housing authority um, how to do things in some ways. Um, yeah, I think in some sort of an educational opportunity, perhaps maybe even collaborating with the, the public health department could be something, you know, feasible for... Um, for the future, much more than that, I do, I definitely don't. I don't have relationships there, so I don't. I don't fully understand our what role we can have. I wonder if that is something we might discuss with Dan, 
as well. Uh, I, I thought it was interesting that he recommended that someone from the Human Rights Committee attend this meeting. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a signal that, that we have a role to play. And, and I think um, we need to determine what that might be. Mm -hmm. Sounds like. And I think it's also important that we um, revisit some of our original goals. We had talked last year about having meetings in some of the community centers, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a human rights committee meeting take place or just uh, schedule another meeting. Uh, Marlene and I had talked about that several years ago. Um, and we, because so many other things came up um, that were a priority, we never pursued that, but that might be uh, some of the initial small steps we might take as we find our way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, when, when we can go back and meet live. <laughs> right. Which could be a long time. Yes. I think you're right. Okay, so I'll, um, yeah, I think, I think that's, a, that's a good next step, I think, would be to discuss further with um, Dan and perhaps, you know, others on, on the select board to, um, think about what role we could play in um, being helpful, you know, to the residents or leadership there. I've added it to my list of things to talk to them about. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. So the next item on the agenda is um, rotation of our committee's leadership and that we need nominations for the next year um, for chair and, and co-chair, however decide to do it. I would like to nominate someone. Uh, Carrie, would you be interested? It's not that I'm not interested. I have to, my job may be changing a little and I'm not sure I can add it to my plate. Um, I plan on certainly staying on the committee, but it just depends on what happens this summer. My part-time job at the school I work at may be going full-time um, and I just, don't know. Um, I can't. I thank you so much for the nomination. I'd, I'd have to really sit on it a little bit, and I need to know what's going to happen with my hours at my my job right now. We're happy to buy you a bigger plate, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anyone else who might be um, interested? You know, I will see what pans out with Carrie, but you know, even to co-chair or might be interested in, in this role. So does that mean that Jen and Christina, you are not interested in carrying on either of you? <laughs> Jen, Jen, you're muted. muted. It was really good too. <laughs> um, this is Jen Howard. Um, yeah, this, as, as much as I have, um, gotten from this tremendous opportunity. I, I know that right now I do not have the brain space to do it um, justice. So I think it makes sense for somebody else to uh, take over. Christina, the ball's in your court. I know, Ready? well, yeah, <laughs> I know, but <laughs> I don't wanna say it, but um, Yes, and I, I, I know that I cannot take it on this year. And in fact, I think I'll be stepping down from the committee um, for the time being because I, it's just been a lot. And I think even at the beginning of this year, I was feeling like there's just so many, um, yeah, balls to juggle right now. And I feel like it's just gotten harder and harder, especially with full time having the kids at home and also trying to work and uh, manage the community pieces as well. And I have so loved this, uh, this work and this group. Um, but I think for the coming year, I, I, I know that I cannot um, continue. So that's where I am. So what about um, Julie? Are you interested maybe working with Carrie? I have to think about it. I'm sort of in a similar spot where I feel like I can't even really handle what I have in front of me with the kids and trying to work and trying to live, but 
I can think about it. I can't give an honest answer at this moment. I think with Ashok pulling out early, he's the obvious person for us to nominate at this point, right? <laughs> <laughs> so unfair. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> I think one of the challenges for us has been that it, it has felt, um, you know, I, I, that the work has just grown and grown and that there are so many things that we want to take part in, that the community asks us to take part in, and things that come up that we've been asked to respond to, um, which has all kind of culminated to a um, pretty good load of, of, uh, in terms of work. Um, and. So I think that's been the challenge because I feel like last year when we had this discussion, it, it was it went similarly. <laughs> and, and so I think moving forward, you know, something I would really suggest is that, uh, which I think we tried to do this year, which is why we probably didn't move with the housing authority pieces and things like that, is that we just simply cannot handle this um, this much work at this point with with all that we've got um, on our plates already. And, you know, we don't have any admin staff or anyone like other boards and, and groups do, you know, to handle some of the administrative pieces here, you know, we're, we're doing it all. And it's just required a, a fair amount of time. And so, um, yeah, I think, I think moving forward, that is something that we're gonna have to really think about is what are the projects, kind of real key priority projects that are feasible and doable um, and, you know, for the folks that are, are leading and participating. Um, so I don't, yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I mean, I, I, I don't know, you know, if, if the conversation with the select board is, um, you know, that there aren't any existing members that um, feel that they can commit to this kind of um, position. And then, um, I mean, I think the balls, to a certain extent in their court to try to recruit. Um, I don't know how that works, you know, bringing in somebody new into that kind of role, but um, that may be, that may be reality. Mm -hmm. We're also down to people. So. And the other, the other issue is, you know, as I've learned over the years, there's a lot of politics that's involved and people that really understand the, the town well and how the town works and the personalities and stuff. Uh, you know, I've been here several years, but I still don't get all of it. And uh, I think that's a really, you know, tricky thing with uh, a group like this, uh, uh, as far as, you know, what we can do, what we can't do, who you can go to to get things done. It's, uh, you know, I've been frustrated by some of the things I've heard at the meetings as to what they want us to do, what they don't want us to do. and how our hands are tied and uh, I'm gonna be very open and blunt and maybe not very political, but the fact that we have to have a meeting at four o'clock in the afternoon because the town isn't willing to help us facilitate a meeting in the evening where a lot of us have full-time jobs and it's difficult for us to get together at four o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. I read. So where shall we leave this discussion? Carrie and Julie are going to consider consider it. Jen, you're muted. You'd think after the hundredth Zoom call that I would remember to do that. Um, I think this has to go on the list of other things to talk about with Kate, because um, I guess what I'm hearing from Julie and from Carrie is that neither one of them really have the the mental space to do this. Um, at this level as well. I mean, I, I, I would, I think that there are substantively so many things for us to be able to do or that we've talked about doing that we want to do in the coming year. And um, like all things that this uh, health emergency has made everything a thousand times harder. So I think it, it um, it's going to require a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think I, th I think Nate Rosen is coming back uh, to school in the fall. Uh, just a crazy idea. You know, he's going to be at Harvard Business School, I believe. I don't know where he's going to be living. Uh, I, I certainly would uh, be happy to approach him and find out what's going on in his life. 
because I think he's uh, pretty talented and could certainly be a co-chair if uh, if he lives in Needham. If he, he lives has, in Needham, right, right, right. Needham. No, no. I can't absolutely. imagine that he's going to go live and <laughs> come back and live with his parents. Well, he would be great. He was great. Yeah. Thanks, Bud. Yeah, and Ashuk. I mean, we don't know if Ashuk is interested. I think I think he's spread pretty thin at work too. I mean, I used to commute with him on the train, and he'd be exhausted at the end of the day and stuff. As you know, a lot of us are with, especially the extra stuff that's going on today. Mm -hmm. But I think we could certainly ask. It doesn't hurt to ask. Okay. Okay. So we will uh, we will add this to our um, discussion points uh, with with leadership and. And Carrie and Julie, if you all, if either of you have, I, I don't, I'm not trying to pressure you or anything, but if you, either of you have any feelings one way or the other, will you let us know? Um, thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the At My Neighbor's Table event that um, Marlene and Amelia, maybe you could re report on. Well, at this point, um, we have a planning meeting coming up. Um, early in June and um, we don't know what we're going to do yet. <laughs> um, we do have a date in the fall but that was an in-person date um, and I don't know if that will end up being if we'll have to decide if we'll if we can meet the goals of the group um, not in person. So um, Amelia is going to be chairing the um, the next meeting for us um, and people have are still very enthusiastic on the planning committee and have lots of good ideas, but we have to see um, where it will go. I mean, you know, one of the ideas, the idea is that you're really sitting and talking to your neighbors um, so, and, break, and breaking bread. And it's, it's different when it's in this type of a um, situation. Marlene, I totally, yeah. I totally agree with you as far as the, uh, the breaking bread and everything and talking to the neighbors, but the idea, and I've been involved in many more Zoom meetings than I'd like to account for, but uh, the ability to really do good breakout sessions, in other words, have a main presentation and then quote unquote breaking bread and you know being with people, but certainly not at a table with them, uh, can can work. It's it's different. It's a. I mean, uh, right. I'm I'm a very social person. I love being with people. I love the hugs. I love all that kind of stuff. But uh, in these times, we this is. Uh, I don't call it the new normal. I call it the next normal. And uh, we just need to figure out, on a positive way, how to go on with our lives and how to continue to do things as well as possible, and also have meaning in the events that we have. Mm -hmm. Amelia, did you have anything to add to what I yeah, said? No, I, I think there will be an interest on the part of residents of Needham um, who have to, are dealing with so many issues and are so frustrated and need to talk about class and racial divides, you know, what is happening in this country. And even though it might not be the same format that we use for the potluck, it won't be as personal and intimate I think people have a lot to talk about uh, and and need answers to. And I think by, I, and by the way, the, the date was October 18th. Right. If that is still going to be the same, same date. Um, and our meeting is next Tuesday. I, I do have a question. Uh, as far as the format for the meeting, there's a woman that I know very well by the name of Colette Phillips. Colette Phillips Communications, and she has a program, uh, actually a company that uh, is a, a program called Get Connected, where she connects people from various communities and diversity. And she might be a pretty interesting person to conceivably be on a panel or even as a speaker at, uh, at this type of meeting, because the things she's posted on Facebook recently, and uh, I would even be able to connect you and have you see the things about the things that have been going on around this country, uh, whether it be in Minnesota or other places in the country, as well as the Boston area. I think it's, uh, you know, someone you may want to take a look at. And I'd be happy to make the introduction. 
Cynthia? Hey, um, I, this is Cynthia Kanung, maybe going out of order, but back to about members and participants. Uh, at the February meeting, we talked about Rinaz Mula, who was interested at that time in possibly becoming a member of the committee. And I've been in touch with her because I'm friends with her and I know that life is very hard for single parents with kids at home. So I don't know where she's at right now. But she is a Muslim. She uh, lives in public housing. She's a talented, marvelous person who I think would would add a lot to the committee if she would be able to make that commitment. I'm not suggesting putting somebody into a leadership position when they first join, but um, since it's an open meeting, I'm gonna make it now, mention her now rather than just in an email. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Looks like Carrie left. Okay. Um, well, now we're at uh, reports. Um, Town issues. Uh, Belinda's not here. She and I don't. I don't have anything um, to report. At Needham, hi, Jared. Do you have anything you would like to share? No, I don't. <laughs> do you, even personal perspective, being a student at home. Uh, it's tough. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. And Dan is also uh, wasn't able to join us today. Um, before I move to announcements, does anyone have any other um, final comments? Okay. Um, oh, okay. I just noticed the town elections were uh, are on are on my agenda, but that just took place yesterday. Hopefully, folks had a chance to vote, and that we still have two NHRC positions still open. Um, which, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that Cynthia mentioned Reynaz that in, in the coming months, if we find others who are interested, um, please do refer them to the select board. Uh, for and next Sophia, month, yes. Sophia is in process. She is. Yeah. yeah, I think there was some glitch and she had submitted everything a couple of months ago, but I think there was some glitch and now she had to redo it just last week. Um, and so our, our next meeting is scheduled for June 18th. And I think unless we have an urgent need to, to have a meeting, uh, probably at the, this point, we, we may not have one. And I think the next time, the next gathering that we're sponsoring would, would likely be the book, um, the book diversity and discussion book club. Yes, Marlene. Well, what about um, the leadership issue? I mean, that, I mean, I think it, we've left it as it's an issue that we're going to have to bring up with um, Kate and the, and the select board, perhaps, unless we hear anything further from, from Carrie and Julie and anyone is... is so free. you don't think we need a meeting about that, even for you to report on that part? Jan, you're muted. <laughs> I think that could be done in the email. That's my communication. brain muted right now. Um, I, I will follow up with Kate and give her the short list of things that we kind of need to talk about, which the last time that I um, reached out to her, she reiterated that they had the election and town meeting and all that coming up. So she said late, late June, but if there's, so if there's something for us to report, then maybe, um, then maybe it makes sense to me, but otherwise it, it may not. Okay. Mm -hmm. may not. Okay. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? Marlene, so moved. Second, but Shram. Thank you. All those in favor, would you state your name and um, yes? Christina Butch Matthews, Ram, yes. yes. But Shram, yes. Amelia Klein, yes. Leah Annabelle, yes. Uh, Jennifer Howard Schroeder, yes. Cynthia Ganon, yes. Marlene Schultz, yes. Jared, we're waiting for you. <laughs> you said yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for, for taking the time to meet. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Daphne. Be Thanks, well, Daphne. everybody. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you Daphne. You, if there's another meeting, make sure you, you connect and let us know so that we can get you on soon. It'll be the same number if you go through through our office. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Summer, stay safe. You too. Bye. Be well, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Say Bye.
。はい。